Welcome to Blue Grit Radio, the podcast that explores making better cops for a better community. I'm your host, Eric Tong. I've been an active police officer since 2007. We will dive into the aspects of police culture, health and wellness, leadership, and mindset. You'll hear from experts, not only from policing, but all industries as they relate to being our best with purpose, passion, and positivity. Join me as we share stories, lessons, and advice so we can all be better for ourselves, our teams, our families, and our communities. This episode is brought to you by Infinity Massage Chairs. To learn more, go to www.infinitymassagechairs.com or check out the show notes and you'll find out how you can get a hold of Jason with Infinity to set up a free consultation and stay tuned in the episode. You'll find out what other perks and benefits you may get from setting that up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Blue Grit Radio. This is your host, Eric, and on this show, we're constantly talking about first responder stressors. We're talking about ways to maximize wellness, maximize resilience, and with that comes directly stress management. And what we don't talk about a lot are the specific tools that may be involved with that whole process. So I'm excited to bring in my guests today, Ethan and Jason. Gentlemen, can you please uh, introduce yourselves and welcome to the show? Hi, my name is Jason Drinkwater. I am the inside sales representative overseeing the West Coast for first responders. Yeah. Hey, Erica. Thanks for having us on. My name is Ethan Jewell. I'm the vice president of sales at Infinity Massage Chairs, and I'm really happy to be on the show. Yeah, absolutely. And so we were talking about a very specific type of uh, stress reduction tool. Um, do you mind just kind of giving your backgrounds as far as like what, what brought you into working with Infinity? And if there are any personal kind of reflections or through the course of working with your company that you've recognized with regards to stress management and things that we can take away for ourselves and for our agencies. Yes, absolutely. So prior to this position, I was a teacher for 10 years Hmm. and I worked in some difficult settings with, um, with many different students, some which were experiencing trauma. And so after realizing that I needed a break from that setting, I was looking for ways that I could make a difference in the world and help people out. And uh, that came across Infinity Massage Chairs. I came across their mission and their vision. And I realized that this is really a place that I can apply my skills and really make a difference in the lives of first responders. Yeah, I love that, man. I, I I try to make a concerted effort, you know, when I recognize those that are helpers, right? Helpers in the community. You know, we talk about first responders a lot on the show, but uh, shout out to the teachers, right? The people in a different sort of front line in the community interacting with kids that absolutely. Ethan, how about you? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been with Infinity for over 10 years and I joined as a a consultant to try to help them uh, tighten up their processes a little bit. And I, I never left. Um, and, you know, I just love being able to help not only uh, police officers and, and dispatch centers and, and first responders of, of every kind, but also, you know, Jason was a teacher and we also sell to teachers. Uh, we sell to a lot of, and even just, you know, corporate America. So mm-hmm. every single workplace has different kinds of stress. Obviously, police departments have a much heightened type of stress and different type of, uh, you know, uh, recovery that's needed from that stress. But I just love being able to be passionate about a product and get it in front of the right people and, and ultimately help them, you know, have a more enjoyable day every day. That's solid. And I mean, you both come from these different walks back into this, this industry, you know, the health wellness industry, and you have this specific, um, New company, Infinity Massage Chairs, right? So I think a lot of people are getting more uh, maybe awakened to the recognition that if we take care of our employees, if we take care of our team, they're going to function better. They're going to be more effective. Are there anything off the cuff that for the naysayers or maybe for the people listening that they have to lead up and kind of bring their bosses in that might be a little bit more old school? Like, you know, why should they care? Like, why should they care about stress management at work? It's the number one question to answer, right? And, and uh, when you think about it, it doesn't matter who the employees are. It doesn't matter if they're, again, police department uh, employees or school or anything else. The most valuable resource that any organization has is the people. 
Mm-hmm. And people, I think, sometimes lose sight of the fact that a small investment every day in that uh, tremendous asset makes a huge difference. And chairs are really affordable when you break it down by usage per day. They're really not that expensive. And, you know, the, the, the small investment that any organization can make and certainly police departments can make uh, pay huge dividends. So for me, it's, it, it seems like a, a, an absolute no brainer. And that's why it's so easy for us to talk about it, because uh, we've not only uh, seen how it can affect other organizations, but we get the feedback and testimonials from police departments that have our chairs. And it's the biggest hit in the department, as you can probably imagine. There's always a line to use it. And so that kind of says everything you need to know about the product. It's always in use. Yeah, that anecdote can be so powerful. And so if I'm going to kind of recap some of the things you hit on, I mean, a lot of times, uh, whether it's healthcare professionals or, uh, you know, wellness, wellness, subject matter experts, or just first responders on the show, like, I feel like we're speaking the same language where we all understand that we need to make an effort, we need to make an investment in our people, right? Our people are our best resource. And that's why wellness is so intertwined with culture and leadership. When you have a healthy organization, you need all of those things working in tandem, you know, but I appreciate your insight, how you're, you're kind of, as I'm hearing it, projecting like, hey, brass tacks, like you got to, you got to spend a little bit of money to make sure your people are functioning well, you can rely on them. Um, you made a mention that massage chairs, uh, as far as like, investment, may be very tangible. Can you kind of tell me more about that? Maybe like the usability or? Yeah, absolutely. So think about it this way. Let's say you're a police officer, you go to work, you've got a wife and kids at home, you, you put in a hard shift, you know, uh, maybe you're mentally stressed out physically, maybe you had to run, maybe you're on a bike, Mm -hmm. who knows, but you've got all this built up tension like you would at any job. But again, it's heightened when you're in law enforcement. And imagine being able to end that day uh, with 15, 20 minutes sitting down in a massage, you put on some nice, you know, melodic music, or maybe some meditative sounds and just unwind, decompress, de-stress. And then when you go home, you've kind of left your job uh, where it belongs, which is at your place of employment, and you can go home and, and interact with your wife and your kids and your friends and, and, and not feel like you're carrying around all that stress and all of those uh, things you might run into on a day to day basis with you. You kind of uh, you know, use the chair as a way to kind of cleanse yourself of, of all that negativity so that you can just kind of go about your business. And, and that way you don't get burnt out. You come to, into work the next day and you know that. No matter how bad of a day you might have, you've got a little bit of relief when you can sit in the chair for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. You hit on a lot of points that I kind of want to re- review. And first off, I'm hearing this uh, recognition of the importance of decompression. You know, I've shared before, but I recognize that when we went to take home cars, like so many agencies are, I mean, there's lots of perks, right? Uh, for cities, like you save money on the vehicles. The vehicles aren't driven as hard. They're not sitting or they're not just like redlining. Um, all the time, you know, kind of shift to shift to shift. Uh, so they actually save governments a lot of money and also operationally sound, right? So you, someone can be on their way in and a, a hot call comes out mm-hmm. and then you have this influx of officers coming on shift that can help address that issue. Mm-hmm. At the same time, there's a con there. And I know that some people, you know, at, at, at least cops are going to be mixed on how they receive this. But when you're on, you're always on, right? Like you hop in, you're already in uniform and you're driving in. Your workday hasn't even started yet, you know, for most agencies until you get into the city limits or the boundaries. Um, and then you are also on in just a vigilance way, right? Like you're driving a marked car. You got to recognize that as you're going down the freeway, you're a target potentially, or you may be flagged down. Even if it's not a violent thing, you may need to assist somebody and you got to be on uh, mentally, physically in all the ways. So that that starts that burn rate, you know, when we talk about burnout of the day or long term, that initiates that. And that really shouldn't kick off. I mean, I've heard some officers kind of say that they turn their radio down. And I I try not to judge, but I'll judge publicly on that. Like, hey, you're in a marked car, you may be called to do something pretty extreme. And so with that, you're on all the way till you get home. Um, and even like just before you go home, right, we talk about is someone tailing you? Is someone trying to follow you home? Are you taking mixed routes? All these things of vigilance where you're just on, on. And to your point, Ethan, right? Like you got to be ready to to 
down regulate and get into home life mode. Um, and I got called out before, um, in, in such a healthy way, you know, for my wife saying, Hey, don't rush in. Like you not, you got to start helping the family. Like if you got to take 10, 15 minutes and get your workout in, please do that because I see you show up better. And I appreciate so much that she gave me that permission, but, um, kind of a long winded way to explain like my own personal insights and observations as far as what happens when people don't downregulate. Um, of course, you know, maybe people are still driving home in a marked car, but what I hear you saying is actually a model I love. And I think that it's a gold standard or platinum standard that we need to get to in law enforcement and first responder work, which is to say, we need to budget and allocate time for people to just be off the street, right? Maybe you turn in your paperwork, you dial in your cross the T's dot the I's. And if you get all your quote unquote homework done, yeah, let's just like go to a meditative room. Maybe we'll go in the gym and just get a little bit of workout, maybe 20, 30 minutes, right? Uh, because you got, you stayed on top of all your stuff or maybe the day wasn't super, super crazy. So um, yeah, I just wanted to offer those insights, uh, expanding on what you just said. Yeah, I really appreciate that. It's good coming firsthand from somebody who, who lives it, you know, and, and I would say that anybody who's listening to this podcast right now, that's wondering like, would that be a good fit where we are for our department? Um, you know, Jason is uh, the expert in the office. He handles all of our uh, first responder business, and he's dealt with hundreds and hundreds of different departments. We've got amazing testimonials, case studies. And so if anybody needed some ammunition to bring to somebody that could say yes uh, about the investment, Jason's got everything that you would need in terms of real world, just like what you, what you just said, Eric, real world examples of how our chairs have made a difference. It's not just hyperbole. It's not just ideas that we're coming up with. These have actually happened. And we've got some repeat customers too. Some departments keep coming back and getting more and more chairs for different areas of their uh, of their station. Yeah, no, that's legit. And so uh, listeners, you know, keep listening uh, till the end because Jason is going to show and reveal uh, why you may want to additionally just to find out more information for your agency and how you can get a hold of him. But uh, find out how you can get a, a sweet massage gun out of the whole deal. So uh, keep keep listening uh, till the end. But one thing I do want to also touch on that that you brought up is what modalities uh, people may consider when utilizing something like, you know, the affinity massage chair. And you brought up music. Um, are there other things as far as stimulus or lack of stimulus that that infinity tends to suggest? Or how would you suggest people start deciding what they want to offer um, in these types of spaces? So a lot of police departments that I work with, what they're doing is they're investing in wellness by setting up a quiet a quiet room or Zen Den room. And so when you have one of our chairs in that room, you can utilize the functions that come with the chair. There are some, func some special functions that come are chromotherapy lights, which have been um, proven to help relax. It also comes with an air ionizer, which is great for me. I have asthma. I can absolutely tell a difference in that the air is significantly cleaner. And it comes with Bluetooth speakers. There are pre-programmed nature sounds within the chair, such as rain or an airplane. But if you want to listen to NPR or blast some music, you can also do that as well. You know, everybody's got a different way to unwind, right? So for some people, it might be as simple as, I just want to sit here in this chair and do nothing but mm -hmm. gain the relaxation I get from the chair. Yeah. Other people might have a favorite podcast, or they might uh, have, you know, uh, some music that they want to either, to use Jason's term, blast, or maybe turn up to a moderate volume and listen. Uh, yeah. And then the chromotherapy, I think it's important to kind of point out what that is. So we have uh, a number of different settings on a few of our chairs that uh, if you're in a dark room, the different types of light that you emit from the chair will result in kind of a different way of, of relaxing and calming down. So, and, and some people use many at the same time. They'll turn the air ionizer on, they'll turn on the chromotherapy, they'll listen to a podcast, and some prefer to do none of them. So it's not like you have to use them, but they're there if you want them. Yeah, I can see how that makes sense for, you know, I can think of specific people in my life and types of people for sure, right? Like where the quiet is like too quiet. 
Um, but then other people like turn the world off for just a moment. And so Mm -hmm. I think that those are great features built in that I'm hearing as well as like kind of recommendations people may think about because, you know, even the, you know, you're hitting it different senses, you know, auditory, visual, but at the same time, uh, I, I appreciate, you know, talking about the blasting music. I'm like, man, some people, it may be uncommon to for have people really like chill out to Metallica, but some people for sure, like I can think of specific people I know that would be like, that is my happy place. So right. yes, or, or just have this immersive uh, music, right? That's like your, your thing, whether it's instrumental, uh, whether it's kind of the lo-fi stuff that I know people may listen to just to kind of zen out, right? They're not focused so much on melodies or words and things like that. One thing that's new that I hear a lot of people are using are binaural beats. Mm-hmm. And I was speaking with one department who said that what they want to incorporate is binaural beats with the chair so that it is doing multiple functions at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Can you, Are you able to share more of their perspective on that or kind of what you glean from that conversation? Well, I think their idea was they from experience, had used binaural beats in the past. Um, I have personally used them um, when I've had insomnia and trouble Mm. sleeping. And so when you are able to both listen to these computer-generated beats that scientifically are um, hitting different parts of the brain, Mm -hmm. while you're in a massage chair, which is lowering your blood pressure and your heart rate, it is really an all-encompassing experience that significantly, in different ways, lowers the stress that an individual is facing at the moment. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I don't know a ton about binaural beats. I know I started down the rabbit hole uh, learning about them a couple of years ago. But yeah, for those curious or it's kind of perked your interest, yeah, I mean, there's there's different audio, um, basically audio, audio waves and sounds that may help people into the parasympathetic for sleep or help them into the parasympathetic, like not really for sleep, but just kind of to, to go into this trance, right? So it's more restorative, but not like sleepy. I mean, there's a lot of experts that, that will put out and have put out so much information. So yeah, good luck going down the rabbit hole, but um, definitely worthwhile to look into. Um, you gentlemen talk about uh, these different features and then helping like you just said, Jason, like helping the body get into a parasympathetic uh, zone or state. Uh, can you tell us more about infinity massage chairs for someone that's like, okay, cool, like massage, I get, I buy into massage, but why a chair? I mean, maybe why infinity? Uh, just a quick background on infinity as a company. We are the largest manufacturer of luxury massage chairs in North America. Um, and we are known for uh, kind of our edict, our, our our purpose is that we kind of believe that the job starts once we have sold a chair. Like our purpose is not just to sell chairs, but what happens after we sell that chair? How do we treat that customer? How do we make sure that the customer gets the chair in, in the right way? Uh, when the chair arrives, is there proper support? We offer free lifetime tech support um, with all of our chairs, and we're the only company that actually offers a non-residential warranty. So if you are a member of a police department and you're wondering, geez, I kind of like the idea of a chair, but I don't want to have to worry about it breaking. It comes mm-hmm. with a full warranty, the same warranty that you'd get if you had it in your home. And we've got an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. And also we deal with the largest retailers you know, in, in America, and we have exclusive agreements with them, and we have for quite some time. And the reason why is because we stand behind our product. You know, nothing, nothing is good in our world unless the customers are happy and satisfied. And that's what we always strive for. We strive for five-star reviews. We, we strive for A-plus in every way possible. And so that brings itself over into every channel that we sell into and certainly with, uh, with law enforcement. Yeah. And you've been with the company for 10 years. How long has Infinity been around? Yeah, so the the parent company has been around for over 25 years, but we've been selling uh, massage chairs for about 15. Yeah, I mean, that says a lot. And I think that, you know, for the people that are like, yeah, I want to go down this road, I want to, you know, start putting some information together, I want to get in touch with Jason. But that is a a question, right? Like, I think most of us all recognize, especially in, uh, in any operative kind of environment, right, where our profession, you're dealing with tech and gear. We know that we get what we pay for, right? So 
you may have this this uh, quote unquote massage chair over here that you can order online and the thing just shows up and you may or may not have any support, any warranty. Uh, whereas I like the information you put out. I think that's going to be very useful for people and decision makers when they think about something that you do recognize it's going to get a lot of use, right? For the agencies where you've brought people in and you've go and gone into their agency as part of their wellness practice and programs. Yeah, if a lot of officers are using this, we want it to last and endure and stay a high quality product. You know, Eric, I'm really glad you brought that up. If I could, I want to just add on to that. So what I've seen the last 10 years of being here is a steady stream of companies come into the marketplace, offer very low priced massage chairs. They're around for 12 months, 18 months, and then they're just gone. And everybody mm -hmm. who bought one of those chairs that wants support can't get it. Uh, other situations are you, you might go online and see a chair that uh, is an unbelievable price, you know, and then you try to call and get support and the phone number doesn't work. So I would just say, you know, especially for law enforcement, especially for first responders, if it's worth spending a dollar on a device that's going to be used by those people, then it's worth buying the best and making sure that you're going to have someone like Jason or our team right here. We're based right in New Hampshire. All of our phone agents are right downstairs from us. They're all right in New Hampshire. They've got an average tenure of between seven and eight years. And so we've got people here that really know the product, care about the product, and you're always going to be able to get somebody that's based in the U.S. on the phone. And that's not always the case with, with other chairs that might be a little bit less expensive initially. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And where my mind's going to is, uh, you know, for those that are convinced, uh, you know, hit up Jason, listen to the inf information and look at the show notes, how to get a hold of him and learn more. But what are some data points that you could share um, or just themes that you can share for those that are like, okay, I need to start building my mental deck. Of course, Jason's going to be, you know, the, the right hand in, in the sales and bringing that information in. But what are some things that would perk out to let's just call them um, traditional folks that are like, okay, cool, like take care of your wellness, but it's not my responsibility. So there are many departments that I've worked with that are more traditional, and they're hearing about the idea of a massage chair for the first time. And one thing that I tell them is, and this is from my years as a teacher, how can you go out and t take care of other people if you don't take care of yourself first? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. One way that you can take care of yourself is by using a proven tool that you know is going to lower your cortisol levels, lower your blood pressure. And so it's like thinking of this as a state-of-the-art wellness machine that is really going to target both physical and mental stress that police are under. And police officers can disagree on a lot of things. But one thing that everybody agrees on is that it's a stressful job and we need to take care of each other and ourselves. March, we were attended IACP Wellness Conference in Louisville. And that was a great opportunity because it allowed different officers, sergeants, lieutenants from across the country the ability to sit in our chairs for five, 10 minutes. and. I tell you, every time somebody sat in the chair, even if they came to it at first very skeptical, you could see it on their faces. You could see the, re the relaxation and the realization that this chair is doing something powerful to the body while they're in it. Again, I think it's that like proof in the pudding where you, where you see it, you hear the anecdotes, you hear the experiences of those utilizing it and those that brought it to their agency. Uh, that's super powerful. Um, as far as testimonials, right, we all recognize that that experience is invaluable. So we talk a lot about how we bring a culture of wellness into our agencies, you know, whether it's fire, dispatch, corrections, and so on. I find a lot of value in looking outside of the first responder industries when we look at leadership acumen and some of the things that we can do to build healthy culture and team dynamics. You know, being that this is such a focus, as, you know, as far as a pursuit and a mission for the folks that you work with, what are some things that you see in your own um, interactions with your coworkers or maybe like a company culture thing that, that you like that's supporting this notion of wellness that we could learn from? Um, one of our mottos here at Infinity is live the brand. And we really want our people 
no matter what department they're in, whether it's accounting, tech support, customer experience, sales, shipping, we want them to really understand the power of our product. So something that the management team here has done is it's basically, it's not really a requirement necessarily, but it's a strong recommendation for everybody here to get a massage two or three times a week. It doesn't count you know, towards their break time. It's extra time off of work where they can go sit in a chair and get some extra relaxation. So um, there are a lot of people in the office who uh, had never knew about a massage chair, never sat in a massage chair. And now that they're here and they're sitting them, it's part of their daily ritual. They've got to, you know, get their massages in every week to kind of feel like they're complete. Um, and so that right there, I think, is the the strongest way that we can live the brand. Uh, in addition, I want to go back to what we talked about previously, which is, you know, our commitment to the customer. Um, you know, so we're all about wellness. If you go to our website, infinitymassagechairs.com and look, you're going to see the word wellness everywhere because massage chairs are a vehicle for enhanced wellness. And part of that is making sure that people feel good about the investment, whether it's a person for their living room or it's a chief for their station. We want to make sure that every single time somebody transacts with, with, with us, they feel really good about it. So the, the way that we instill that with our employees is by allowing them to uh, use the chair. We also offer a really strong employee discount. So if somebody wanted to uh, get a chair for their home um, they or even buy a gift for, for one of their family members or a friend, we've got a very, very deep uh, employee discount that allows them to get the chair that much closer to their everyday life, which is in their homes. But I think we do an amazing job from a culture perspective. We're, we're, again, we're not just focused on pushing chairs out the door. We're really trying to get everyone here to live the brand so that people that buy our chairs experience the brand in the best way possible. Yeah, that's solid. And uh, when you're talking about this, I couldn't help but think, okay, you know, you have people using that at work. I've had massages before where I just straight up fell asleep. Um, and they were pretty rough massages at times, but it, it probably showed me in retrospect, like how fatigued I was, just how tired I was. Um, do you see anything like that where the different settings might be better for different types of situations, maybe people at work versus like the end of the day? Um, are there things that pop out in mind for you there? Yeah, I'll answer. I'll let Jason add on to it. Uh, the first thing is that everybody has a different body type. Everyone has a different uh, type of massage that's going to work best for them. There are some people that don't like their feet being massaged at all, and other people it can't it can't be strong enough. And that goes for every other area. So the first thing you have to realize is what type of massage do I like the best? Uh, and then once you figure that out, which is easy to do with our chairs because they're completely customizable, then you can kind of figure out, okay, I've just came back from my workout first thing in the morning. I need to, you know, kind of recover from that workout. I'm getting a little bit older now, so I'm going to get that recovery in first. Or I just want to unwind after a day at work, and maybe that's going to be a little bit more relaxing and soothing. But having said that, again, there is no one set answer for everybody because every single person is going to experience a massage chair in a different way. Yes, absolutely. So I there's two different ways that I use the chair, depending on what I'm doing that day. If it's a day where I'm sitting and making a lot of calls and doing research, then I'll use the working relief that really targets the specific areas of my body that get sore after sitting in a chair for several hours. Um, that's a program that is really great specifically for dispatchers who need to be in a chair for up to 12. I've even heard 15 hours. Mm -hmm. Another program that I've been using a lot is the post-workout. This is great because I've been going to a place called Hotworks. I'm, I don't know if it's across the country, but it, it kicks my butt. It is a very difficult workout. And when I am done and I'm done having my post-workout asthma attack, I then will go into a chair and it will loosen me up from all the tension that's in my body. Yeah, that sounds legit, man. I mean, we don't have hot works out here, but I can only imagine it sounds like a high intensity thing. <laughs> You're talking about like kickstarting your asthma, but then, hey, you got that ionizer built in there. So you're in good hands. I love how you point out, you know, this work is it working relief program. Yes. 
Okay. And I think that something that a lot of us recognize when we think about it, but those that are new might not really recognize, hey, you're a law enforcement officer, you're sitting a ton, um, even in a pretty busy place, right? You're patrolling in the car, you're typing in the car, you're typing outside of the car. And so I, I love that. That's something that popped in my mind. And it was a note I made. I'm glad you hit on it as far as like specific types of modes or programs that would be helpful for specifically combating that, right? Because uh, you know, sitting's the new smoking. Many uh, health professionals said years ago, and now like, hey, standing is the new sitting. And so they're just talking about more movement. But I think that anywhere where you can sit in a device, right, and it's targeting muscles, um, it's breaking down lactic acid, right, and it's probably also cre- increasing blood flow in some of the right ways, you know, as massage can do. And so I think that's really relevant to think about that brass tacks there. Yes, I, I want to just kind of reiterate the fact that it absolutely helps with circulation. And one aspect of the chairs that I've had many police speak to me about because they have to be on patrol for so many hours is the wonderful foot massage. We have th- mm-hmm. three roller foot massage that feels tremendous after having to stand for long periods of time. Yeah, those boots... Uh... Those boots work in a detail and event, whether it's like flagging an intersection, which was like by far my least favorite duty ever, uh, or you're just working like an event, like, you know, a sports game, a concert where you're just like on concrete and yeah, you feel it all the way up your body from your feet. And so I can definitely visualize how helpful that would be. When you gentlemen talk about living the brand as far as like a company mantra, what kind of things do you do? You know, you think about Let's just take a, a really busy work day. Uh, you had to deal with some awful, awful traffic. So you're, you know, hypertense from the beginning all the way to kind of a longer work day that I think a lot of people can recognize from corporate America. You know, I can look at you know, my wife's perspectives in the private sector with startup life and just the hustle and grind that I think so many of us are experiencing, you know, the weekend warriors, but also like you're, you're a parent, you got all these activities and you're like a shuttle for your kids. Uh, and then you got work calls that happen when you're still, you know, at home. So think about one of those super busy days. Uh, what are some things that you would incorporate, you know, as far as like living the brand and just sharing your own kind of insights of wellness and what helps you along? Yeah, I mean, I, I can speak for myself and say, in addition to, you know, getting a massage pretty much every day in the middle of the day to break it up. I, you know, because I think, that, you know, wellness, we're talking about massage chairs, but wellness is a lot of different components. So I try to start every day by going to the gym. Uh, it always gets uh, me in the right frame to tackle any kind of situation. I always have a better day uh, when I go to the gym and I try to get there four to five times a week. Uh, then middle of the day, I'll uh, you know have the massage. And then usually at some point in the evening, I'm either you know playing pickleball or I'm going for a walk or I'm playing golf or doing something to continue to move. Uh, and then I, I, you know, uh, try, I'm not 25 anymore, unfortunately. Uh, and I need, I need much more sleep to, to really incorporate wellness into my life. So I'm in bed, uh, way earlier than I want to admit, um, you know, and, and just try to try to in every way that I can just turn the dials up a little bit on being a healthier person, because for me, anyways, I can only speak for myself, but being a healthier person, 100% helps to become a better employee and a happier person as well. And and again, massage chairs can be a big part. Yeah, 100%. And real quick, Ethan, I'll say uh, we need to we need to destroy those stigmas of like, oh, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Oh, well, yeah, you will. And it'll come sooner. Um, I'm I'm unapologetic about my early bedtimes at times. Um, you know, sometimes I, I start my mornings pretty early. I usually start them really early. So uh, I'm not I'm not uh, foreign to like the 830 nine o'clock uh, bedtime in the darker months of the year. Um, you know, we're, we're coming out of summer, so I'm, I'm kind of edging that way these days. Um, Jason, how about you? So taking care of my stress levels is extremely important to me. When I was a teacher, I had enormous amounts of stress on me and it really affected my health in adverse ways. I know a lot of listeners might be able to relate to this. Um, both physically and, and as well as mentally. Mm-hmm. Um, I have significant less stress on me now that I work with police departments and not eighth graders. But I will Sometimes say it's similar. I will say that sleep, as Ethan said, is extremely important to get a good good sleep. And 
one thing that I practice and I work on practicing every day is mindfulness. Because when you use mindfulness, a, a good way to think of mindfulness is your brain is like a computer. And when you have too many tabs open, you are not able to function at your fullest. Once mm-hmm. you use mindfulness for even five minutes, it's like closing those tabs, re- rebooting your brain, and you are much fresher and ready to take on um, the tasks and responsibilities that you have. Yeah, I love that. That's so huge. And we talk about it here and there, mindfulness. But uh, I'll, I'll just share this personal plug where this morning I had my phone and I got the dogs on leash and I just I didn't have much time. For a run, so I was going to go brisk and like pretty quick get back so I could get my daughter to school and had my phone in my hand and I was like, oh, where do I put this? He's you know it's going to swing around if I'm trying to run fast or I got to hold it. And I'm like, no, just leave it, right? And like you talk about life having all these open tabs and like the computer of life, and then you also have this literal computer in your hand with all these open tabs and apps and distractions, work, friends, all these things, and it's like. I felt so free for just a moment, you know, before jumping back into the day, just leaving the phone at home. And I can see how forcing that unplug in a lot of ways, like in allowing yourself that unplug, where you hop into a chair, you you leave your phone over there, unless you're on call, that kind of thing, right? But there are probably times where you can put on airplane mode just for a little bit. Um, and maybe that's a perfect time to ask you, you know, what kind of setup do you you folks have at Infinity? You're, you're making and selling and supporting the chairs there. Uh, what kind of setup do you have there? And are there varied room types uh, as far as utilization of the chairs? Yeah, there's a couple things I want to point out. One is that we offer through our benefits program uh, reimbursement for anyone that wants to get a gym membership. We really encourage that. Uh, and there's a couple of different groups of people that go for walks as, you know, uh, not just as individuals, but three and four at a time to get their steps in. Yeah. And in terms of the massage chairs, we've got two different rooms. One is the largest massage chair showroom in, uh, I think, east of the Mississippi for sure, and it might even be the whole country. We've got 30 different chairs in there, um, and it's usually got at least a couple people, whether it's customers or employees that are utilizing it. And then we have a training room that we use for our sales team, and that's got, I would say, eight to 10 massage chairs in there as well. So we've got two different rooms, about 40 or 50 chairs. So there's 60 or 70 employees here and there's always enough chairs to go around so the people that want to take advantage of it can yeah i love that um i think that that's just an opportunity the reason why i ask that is you know we talked about kind of the quiet room zen den i think as you put it and i can think of a lot of agencies or wellness coordinators that are like okay like yeah i'm thinking about the right room for that but some of these bigger departments i could see value and maybe if you don't have the, that specific space or that many of them Maybe you have like one or two, um, you know, different precincts or, you know, one main station, like a couple small rooms where you can really cut off. And then maybe you do have them in a more common area because, I mean, people like to socialize. It's great for team environment, but you may have that that area where you could be sitting there or people can kind of be cycling out sitting there as other people are, you know, getting some paperwork done or maybe a semi common area. Uh, like a break room or adjacent to the fitness room. Maybe it's not super zend out, but I could see a lot of benefit in being able to have that for frequency and just opportunity of use. All right. So the listeners have been patient and those that have stuck around have an opportunity. Jason, do you want to tell us about this opportunity? Yes. So this is an exciting opportunity. We are offering, if you meet with me, we are offering a free pro advantage massage gun. And this has a value of $350. Dang. I know Mama yeah, wants a massage gun, so. <laughs> just to give some clarity to that, too. When he says meat, this is, there's no obligation to buy, right? So Jason's a wealth of knowledge. He's got a ton of really good examples of how we've helped other departments. So whether it's a Zoom call or it's over the phone, if you spend some time with Jason and let him kind of walk through your scenario, all he's going to do is give you his advice. It's more consultative than anything else. He will be able to give you special pricing that we have for law enforcement. But all you have to do is have that conversation and you instantly get a free massage gun. And talk about one thing that I didn't mention. I have a massage gun at my desk. I use it every day, multiple times a day uh, to make sure that I'm able to go to the gym the next morning. But all you got to do is talk to Jason for 10, 15, 20 minutes and the massage gun is yours. 
I'd, I'd love to get to uh, to know you and have a conversation and know your special situation. I know each police department is set up differently. So I bring my experience of working with departments across the country to specifically tailor uh, something that will help your department. Yeah. I love that. And that initial call and getting the information is the first step, right? Maybe it's not in the budget now, but it could probably be in the budget next year. And there are grants for this and they pop up more and more local, state, national level. So I really appreciate the the wealth of information y'all have provided specifically for your company and Infinity, but also stress management and how we need to take that note back into the workplace. Is there anything you folks would like to wrap with uh, before I send people off? You know, I just wanted to say thank you um, for for the time and the opportunity to reach this audience. And if you're out there listening and, you know, it doesn't matter what your position is at the department, if you feel like there's any kind of potential value, um, who's the person in the office or in the department that would be able to have that conversation with Jason, just uh, send the information over to them. And it's all about spreading. I mean, the first time that I sat in a massage chair, I thought to myself, who would ever who would ever do this? Uh, you know, I was a consultant brought in and now I am, <laughs> I'm addicted to massage chairs. And, and so I would just highly encourage anyone that's remotely interested in what we're talking about, get in touch with Jason. And again, thank you, Eric, for having us on. Thank you for tuning into another episode of Blue Grit Radio. As always, support this community by subscribing, giving us a five-star review and following, liking and sharing posts on Blue Grit Wellness on Instagram. You can reach me there or email me at bluegritwellness at gmail.com. Be well and stay gritty.